everything. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, like Bobby says, hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm Darren Best. <laughs> Love you, Bob. <laughs> Darren. Dad said Darren Taranto. <laughs> I don't know if that's a curse or a blessing. <laughs> it's a curse. Amen. I want to ask Tony to come and take these prayer requests uh, before the Lord and, and even share maybe what uh, if he's got anything the Lord's laid on his heart as we begin this service. How many enjoyed the service last night? Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We just give you praise, Father. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we are ready to receive once again. Not just receive, but give. Hallelujah. It's a give and a take, a give and a take, a push and a pull. Hallelujah. We just bless you, God. Come on, Tony. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord God, that you meet the needs of these people, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you see where these people are at in life and you see their circumstances and situations that they're all in, Lord. And God, that you're mightier, Lord, and you're much bigger than our situations and circumstances, Lord. There's no mountain that you cannot move. Lord, there's no wall that you won't tear down, Lord God, Father, for these people, Lord. For these are your people, Lord God, who are called by your name, oh, Father. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that you just reach down to these people, reach in these people's lives, Lord God, who's going through turmoil and, and all kinds of things, Lord Father, that only you can put together, only you can align things out, Father. Lord, we just give you praise and glory for this service. We thank you, Lord God, uh, for safe travels for all the ministers and the folks that came out, Lord. Lord, we want you to have your way in, the, in this service, Lord, and have your perfect way flow through your people, Lord God. Flow through the musicians, Lord God. Flow through your people, the children, and all that's in here, Lord God. Let your word just flow mightily, Lord, to the hearts and the very core of your people, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you, Father God, for the mighty one that's going to come forth tonight, Lord. We give you glory, Father God, that you will help us stand strong in your word, Lord God. Father, we thank you that you give us to, that you help us to stand strong and stand steady in your word, Lord God. Lord, we give you glory, Father. And it's in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ that we give you the praise and all the honor is due to your holy and precious name, Lord Father. Hallelujah. I just want to touch on a thing that Gary talked about last night about standing. And uh, a couple of things come to me about standing. Uh, sometimes when we stand, we, we, we have a tendency to get complacent or we get bored. Our legs, our backs get out on us. We, uh, we, we just kind of, we come to a place where we just give up. Because it's taking too long for the Lord to answer our prayers, right? And we go through preparations to stand, right? Go through preparations, prayer and praise. And when we stop these things, when we just come to the place in life where we, we just stop it, and Gary was he was on point when he was talking about we gotta stand. I mean we gotta and we we can't stand no more. Somebody to come beside us and help us to stand. You know because this is not a one person thing right here. This is a corporate body thing. No matter whether you live in Georgia, Atlanta, no matter where you live at, this is a corporate thing. But we have to really not give up when, when the Lord don't answer our prayers, Sheila. Our backs hurt. Our heads hurt, Gary. We fight with these things. And, and I, you know, it's like we don't know when God's going to say, hey, all right, you know, we're going to touch it. And I, and I told Dan, I said, I don't know how Gary does it. I don't know how he's done it for all his life to deal with the migraines without going bananas. You know, and, but sometimes we want to push what God's put within us too early. Just like in pregnancy. You wouldn't come in and fight with being pregnant, right? There's a time for it to come out. And you can't you can't hurry it. No matter how much it can take or whatever stuff you take to try to just not, you know. We get tired of standing and waiting for this thing to be birthed out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he has a more excellent way to show us. It's a transcending way. And everything that the Lord spoke last night was straight dead on point with what He's been speaking. Not just to me, but I believe to all of us. Hallelujah. 
And I believe God's really going to give us strength in the days ahead. Strength to stand. If we can't stand for ourselves, stand for somebody else. Because for me, when I don't want to stand, I don't want to stand. But there's people out there that depend upon me to stand for them. And we got to do that for each other. It's, it hurts. It's painful. It's frustrating. You're like, God, I, I'm praying for them and they're still doing stupid stuff. Why should I still stand? Stand. We gotta stand on His promises and not look back. What the Lord spoke last night was so powerful. It hit me in the head like a brick. When I got home, I was like, you know, <laughs> stop stepping on my toes, Lord. <laughs> but we need that. But we need ministers to come in and say, hey, listen, this is what God's saying. If you don't like it, then lump it. We gotta keep on pressing. Keep on being prepared. And most of all, I would say most of all of everything else is keep our praise up. Always keep our praise up. In my worst of headaches, where I would cry, I would just fall to my knees and be like, God, I don't know what to do, but I thank you. I just thank you that you're faithful. I thank you that you're faithful. That this is nothing to you, Lord. That you can fix this. But even if you don't fix it, I'm still going to walk out my faith. Even if you don't fix it, I'm still going to climb the mountain. Even if you don't fix it, I'm still going to press through. Because there's too many people in this room that I've seen, Beth, that has been in low places in life, but never has given up. Amen. Never has given up. She don't know how many people she's touched. With her testimony. She don't know how many times that I have went into some dark places. And I'd look at her videos. And I'd see what she'd been through. And I'm like, you know, she's got two kids. Who am I to sit back and say, woe is to me? And she still pressed through. She still come to church. She didn't have to the time that she didn't feel good. We never forced her Beth come to church. You know, she made up in her heart. I want it for my kids. If she can't do it for herself, she's gonna do it for her kids, huh? Yes. Right? We gotta do it for people. There's inspiration all around us. Dana, you coming out? We're all coming out of this. This is not a daily thing. It's not a bad. It's a, it's a whole thing. Yes. And I'm telling you, when the Lord begins to move on this word. And in this ministry, it's going to be like a dynamite. It's going to be like fire. And it's going to be out of control. No matter how much we try to put a backfire on to put it out, we can't put it out. Can't put it out. I told Lou, I said, once, once the ministry gets going and once it gets flowing, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. It might be a, it might be a small place back in the woods. That's all right, though. Look where John was at. He's back in the woods. Stand for the people. Stand for yourselves. Stand for one another. Don't be quiet. Don't ever be quiet before the Lord. Unless you have let the Lord tell you to be quiet. Always make your request. Always. No matter what. Always. Always sing a song. I can't sing. Everybody knows this. But I sure try when I get in the presence of the Lord. You know, I give it my all. I say, God, you know, I can't sing, but I got something for you. <laughs> you, know? you know, I love y'all. Y'all, y'all really, you're, you're my family. You know, I have to be myself for y'all. And I think y'all, we all can be be ourselves before. If you can't, if you can't be yourself, then why even be? You know. Lord, I pray that you would bless the ministry tonight, Lord. Lord, bless the word that's going to come out of the minister's, like, the minister's mouth, Lord God. Give him the veracity, Lord, the articulation, Lord, to bring forth your word that will touch your people to the very core of their being. Touch the musicians and everybody that's in attendance and everybody that's even watching, Lord. Let the word, Lord, go out like lightning, O God, and let it hit them like thunder, O Heavenly Father. And we thank you, Lord, that you have your perfect way 
your perfect flow in this service. In Jesus' name, amen.
and another refreshing and another refreshing. But the Lord said to you now this day, you're walking out uh, further into the deep. Uh, hallelujah. Where your soul is cried out. Uh, hurrah, maha, where your soul has cried out. Lord, there's got to be more. Uh, Lord, I've been waiting and I've been pushing and I've been walking and I've been keeping my peace. Uh, hurrah, maha. But the Lord said to rise up this day. Uh, hallelujah. Know that you have entered into a place. Uh, hallelujah. That you will not have to go back into the old and you will not have to return back uh, to the dung heap. Uh, the Lord said put it all in his hands. Uh, he's working things out for Cheryl right now. Uh, he's working in the midst of her home. Uh, in the midst of her children. Uh, and he said I am the midst. I am the chaos. Uh, and I will be the peace in the midst of the chaos. Because there is nothing that I have lost control of. Uh, oh, But I'm moving in the midst. Uh, and you'll see and you'll hear uh, of good things. Uh, and it's been a long said rejoice uh, for today is your day.
Hallelujah. It's not our ministry, God. It's no. your ministry. Yes. It's not our it's word. It's your you, word. It's Hallelujah. You. It's not our presence, but it's oh, your presence, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Glory to your name, Jesus. So real, I don't want to be in the camera. <laughs> the darkness was so just, it's like God was something that I couldn't feel, couldn't touch. It wasn't tangible. It was something that I had hoped, you know, for. It was something that I wished. It was something that I watched everybody else, you know, be able to feel and be able to touch. And, you know, something that I longed for and something that I ran from and something that I didn't want. <laughs> it was just everything but real to me and darkness was real to me and darkness was just overwhelming and it just came to me even though I've been I've been out of darkness for a long time. It still tries to creep in, it still tries yeah, to chase me, but but I just realized <laughs> it's just so funny that you know, darkness only has power because of the light. That's right. Uh -huh. And it's just so funny that you know, without the light is darkness, but you flash a light, even just a little tiny flicker, and there is no more darkness. It might be blurry, or it might be, there might be shadows, but what is a shadow? It's nothing. It can't touch me. It can't grab me. It can't do nothing but scare you. It can't do nothing but scare you. And that's just, for somebody who's been in darkness, and it's been just so... Just, I they ain't even a word for it besides yes, just hallelujah. not even me. I was just a, I was a shadow. I was yes. a shell. And for somebody to to realize how much power Come that on. you have because you have the light inside of you, yeah. I'd be darned if I don't shine my light That's for right. my Come life. Yes. And it's just so tangible now, and it's so real now, and it's so yes. just That's everything. Yes. It just in my heart when I'm sad, it's when when I'm overwhelmed, when I'm disappointed, when I'm just, it's all shadows and it's nothing, nothing compared to the light that, that makes your, all of your fears, just a shadow, just something you can just look at, like and say, <laughs> what are you? And I just, I'm thankful, I'm just thankful <laughs> and just to know that just to know that I can shine that light, like, to know that, what it, okay, so, to know that God is in me, to know that God is love, to know that God is, I feel powerful, I'm yeah. bold, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just ain't never felt that way before, Praise and it's just, it's just not nice. such a presence in the house yes, there is. I just want us uh, to sing this as we receive uh, 
Gary and Lydia, I don't know if they're going to sing another song. Or Gary's just going to bring the word. Amen. I think he's ready to receive the rest of this word. Change me, Lord, into your image. Rearrange me, Lord, and cause us to grow. things in our midst. Amen. Yes. And uh, if you leave here like you came, we have failed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The Lord began to speak a word to me uh, a, a few weeks ago, and I've been sharing it now and then, and he spoke something to me just a few minutes ago, and I'm going to share it to you in, in addition to it. <clears throat> He said, if you think like you used to think, you're missing the point right. of what God's doing. That's right. The purpose of all of this is that we mature and grow up in God. Take on His nature, His mind. And we look at each other like He looks at us. And that's a hard thing to do. Because a lot of times we'll look at somebody and say, well, you're a rascal because God showed me. <laughs> and that may be true. That may be true. But God wants us to see you as He sees you. Yes. The finished product. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes. Uh, the Lord began to speak a word to me, and I'm going to pass it along uh, this afternoon to you. Uh, a few weeks ago, he spoke the word release. Amen. This, there is a release that is at hand yes, right now. Thank you. Yes, sir. Now, it's not the release where you're released from your problems. No, no sir. Hallelujah. Everybody said amen. 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 <laughs> it's not a release to get you out of your headaches and your heartaches. That's not the release. No, sir. It's a release from where you have been in your mindset to be released into a new place in God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. My mind goes back to when uh, Elisha, th there was an enemy king, and I forget the name of him at this point, but he had decided he wanted to invade Israel. So what he did was he gathered his armies and he said, we're going to go this route and we're going to attack a certain way. The Spirit of the Lord came to Elisha and he told the king, he said, you need to set up an ambushment over here because the enemy's coming. Yes. And sure enough, he's, the king heard the word of the Lord, set up his army there, and here comes the enemy king, and of course they fought him back. They come back a little bit later and they said, we're going to set up and we're going to attack this way. And the Spirit of the Lord came to Elisha again, told the king, go set up over here this time. And he did this a few times, and every time he turned around, the, the Spirit of the Lord would reveal to Elisha what was about to happen and God would honor the word of the prophet and every time the enemy was stopped. Yes, sir. Finally, the enemy king turns to all of his troops and he said, we've got a traitor in our midst. Somebody here is telling the king of Israel my battle plans. Somebody here is telling this and you're messing us up and I want to know which one of you guys are messing me around. Finally, a little servant spoke up and said, there's, there's nobody here that's a traitor king. There's a prophet in Israel. Yes. Yeah, and the Spirit of the Lord is coming to him and speaking and revealing to him some things. Come on. That's awesome. 
And so Eli, uh, uh, the, the enemy king got a brilliant idea. He said, well, we obviously can't whip the, the, the enemy, uh, the whole army of Israel, but surely we can beat up an old man. So we're going to go and we're going to attack the prophet. We're going to stop him. This is what will work for us. Here's what I want us to hear. How we see things and understand things and perceive things has to change. Yes, they yes. do. The Bible says that they came and they surrounded the house of Elisha. And as they surrounded the house of Elisha one morning, the Bible says that the servant Gehazi, he goes outside and doesn't say what he's doing outside other than the fact that he goes outside. And when he gets outside, he looks around. And when he looks around, he sees nothing but the enemy as far as, as, as his eye can see. How many of us have ever felt surrounded by yes, the enemy? Yes. And that's what we see. And so he goes back in and he tells Elisha, he says, Master, we're going to die. Because we are totally surrounded by the enemy. We don't have a prayer. And I like what happens next. The Bible says that Elisha comes out there and he prays. But he doesn't pray, God, get me out of this mess. No. I mean, that's what we pray. Because yeah. that's our mindset. Yeah. All we can see is our little problem and our little headache and our little this and our little that. And we can't see what God sees. And all we can see is the enemy surrounding us. And here's the servant. And I want you to hear this. There are those that live in a servant realm. Yes, absolutely. But God's looking for a people to raise up and be mature in Him that will change their mentality, yes. their way of thinking, yes. so that we're no longer just a bunch of weary pilgrims trying to make it in. Come on. Amen. The Word of the Lord came and He said that, that Elisha laid hands on the servant and prayed for the servant. He didn't pray to get rid of the enemy. He didn't pray to change the circumstance. How many knows that's what we do? Yeah, yeah. Come on, Come on now. You ever listen to prayer request? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know nobody here prays that way, but we all know people that do. Amen. They begin to pray, and he prayed for him. He said, "Lord, open his eyes." Yes. Yeah. Now wait a minute. The the, the servant's eyes was open because uh -huh. he could see the enemy. Yeah. Our eyes have been opened in a lesser order, a lesser realm, so that all we can see is the enemy. Everywhere on. we look is nothing but the enemy. What is that exactly what does that mean to me in 2020? It means this that we open our eyes and we can see our aches and pains. We can see our financial problem. We can see our kid problem. We can see our job problem. We can see all the problems that surround us all the time. Yeah. But God says, I'm looking for somebody that has that anointing of the firstborn. How many knows that's who Elisha was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello, Walls. Yes. Yes, Elisha was, remember that? That's what happened. Let me back up real quick for those of you not sure if it's in the Bible. The Bible says that Elijah, come on, yeah. he shows up, closes heavens. Yeah. Remember that? Yes, sir. Just out of the blue, he walks up one day and tells Ahab, says, I'm going to, uh, God's going to close your heavens and it'll not rain again until I say so. Yeah. And remember that story? And then we, we follow Elijah's ministry a little further along as things begin to go along. What takes place with Elijah? Elijah has an anointing and a ministry to call fire down on people, call judgment on people, to deal harshly with people and close people's heavens and create a famine. How many knows we've been dealing with ministry now yeah. for a hundred years that all they've done is put fear in the hearts of people and yeah, they, right. they've told them all about hellfire damnation. They've told them all about this and all about that. But God says, I'm raising up a ministry that's not going to walk in that old anointing anymore. I want somebody that knows how to set my people free. Yeah, yeah. We know the story. That, that after a period of time, the Lord tells Elijah, I want you to go anoint this king to be king over Israel because I'm changing the order. Yeah. I want you to anoint this king to be king over another nation. And Elijah, Elijah's feeling pretty good about himself at this point because you know God's changing the order of Israel and he's changing the order of this nation. And then all of a sudden the Lord speaks to Elijah and he says, and guess what? I want you to go and anoint Elijah in your place. Yeah. Why? Because I don't want your anointing to continue. Woo! I'm here to tell you that there's oh. anointings that's in the church world today that God says, I want to bring it to an end. I want to stop that old anointing of hellfire damnation and condemnation and judgment. Oh, nobody wants to help me now. The Bible, watch this. The Bible says when they came out of Israel, there were 12 tribes. Are you with me? You can read them. You can read them. It lists all 12 tribes that come out. But when you get over to the book of Revelations... There's 12 tribes again, but this time one of the tribes is missing and God's replaced it with another one. Yeah. 
Yeah. The tribe of Dan is missing from the book of Revelation. What is Dan? Dan is a tribe, and you can check it out. Yeah. It's a tribe called Judgment. Yeah. God says, I'm removing judgment in the book of Revelation. I'm removing judgment of all of your house. Amen. If you want to sit and judge me, I'm here to tell you, you're going to already miss what God's yeah. going to do. If all you do is look at me and you see fault and failure and shortcoming, I'm a this and I'm a that, I say, God bless you because I'm walking on into the fullness of God while you're going to be left out in the wilderness. And I'm going to pray God deliver you. But here's what the Lord is saying at this point in time. He's saying, Elijah, you got to raise up and you got to begin to anoint somebody in your place because I do not want that old anointing of judgment to continue. I want a fresh new mantle of life to rest upon my prophets. My God, come on. The word of the Lord says, amen, then we know the story. Elijah's name means, if you get into the Hebrew, the study of Elijah's name means God is Jehovah or, or Jehovah is God. Take your pick. It means either way. But in order to understand what Elijah's name really means, you have to put the Hebrew inflection on it. And what it literally translates is this. God is an angry Jehovah. And you look at everything Elijah did. God was an angry Jehovah. He was bringing judgment. He was closing heavens. He was calling fire down on people. Yeah. Everywhere he went, something. Yeah. Brooks were drying up. Rivers yeah. were drying up. Everywhere was famine. There was all kinds of problems. And God says, I don't want that to continue. I want you to anoint Elisha in your place. Uh, well, Elisha's name translates to God of freedom. Uh, but I want you to know there's one writer put it this way, and I love the way he interpreted the name of Elisha. He said that his name means the God that's made me free from all that plagues you yeah. have. Every plague that the enemy yeah. sends our way. Carol, I'm here to tell you that God says, I'm going to release you from it. I'm going to turn you loose so that you're not accountable anymore to the locust plague and the flies and the frogs and all the other stuff that's plagued us up until this point. God says, I'm releasing you from that. Now we know the story of how Elisha followed the man of God. The Bible said he poured water over the hands of the man of God and he followed him everywhere. And we find that on the day of transformation, the day that God changed the order of things, that they began a journey and they left four different towns. And everywhere along the way, everywhere along the way, somebody would say to Elisha, don't you know your master will be taken from you today? And he said, yes, I do. Hold your peace. They said, why don't you stay here with me? Everywhere along the way, you can settle for less. Everywhere in your journey with God, you can settle for less if you want to. Because this is not a walk for the city. No, sir. Is this all right? Yes. This is not a walk for those that are weak minded. This is for somebody that are warriors yes. that will not give up. Yes. That will hang on to this That's thing it. to the last yes. drop. That's oh, it. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm making any sense or not. Yes. But I want you to hear God said it's time for release. It's time you understand He's cutting you loose from everything that's held you back in your thinking, in your understanding. Oh, hallelujah. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is is he. And we think we're defeated. We think we're tired. We think we're old. We think we're run down. We think we've got aches and pains and God knows what else. And that's the problem. We've been thinking, thinking, thinking. But God says, I'm going to release you from that. For Elisha could have stayed. But he said, no, I have to go on. I've got to see transformation complete. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says that they came, we know the story, that they, they came to the crossing of the River Jordan and he said, this is what I want us to hear for a minute here. Come on. He said, what do you want? He said, I want a double portion of what you've got. That didn't mean I want to do twice what you do. That's right. that, that meant something to the culture of that day. Yeah. It meant I want to be the firstborn of a whole new generation. Oh, no. I want to be something that's never been done before. I want something different. Yeah. Can I tell you something? That's where I am. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be different. I, I don't want to do the same old thing. I don't want to see revivals raised up like they did in the 50s or 60s or 70s. I don't want to see the Colosseums filled with somebody that hear my great words of wisdom. I don't want to hear all that stuff. I want to see, thank you, hon. I want to see somebody that, that will say, hey, uh, uh, never a man spake like this yeah. man before. That's what I want. That's what I'm hungry for. When Jesus came, uh, hallelujah, people came. People came, Tony, because they wanted their fleshly desires filled. Yeah. They wanted loaves and fishes. They wanted somebody to heal them. They wanted somebody to do this and that. I don't want to be all those things. I don't want to have my mind changed yeah. so that I look and think and act like my father. I want them to be when they look at me. They say there's somebody that
that's been with the Lord. There's somebody, amen, that's not another religious somebody. There's somebody that hasn't changed. When they speak a word of life, that will change you from the inside out. Whether you like it or not. Honey, if you're in hell, I'm pulling you out of hell. If you're in judgment, I'm releasing the judgment. No matter where you are, what you're doing. I'm here to tell you, release is at hand. God wants to release you from all. Releases from all that mess. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to see this. We talked a little bit about this last night. God began to make, give me such a fresh perspective on this when I shared with you guys last night about how we have camped out. Yes. We've camped out at the golden altar. We've camped out at worship. We've become experts at worship. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. And we don't realize that's not the end of the matter. Yes. No, sir. Oh. The Bible says that he told him, I want a double portion of what you got. I want to be the portion of the first one. I want to be a whole new breed. Yes, I don't want to be a continuation of the old. Yes. Watch this. I want you to watch this. How many knows? I gotta digress for just a minute. How many knows? How many knows if, if you bring forth children, or if you are a child of, how many knows you bring some of that curse with you? Yes. Yeah. If you have children, you pass it on. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Come on. Yeah. How many times have you looked at somebody and say, look just like their mom? Yeah. <laughs> they act just like their daddy. Yes. Yes, Am I telling you the truth? Yes. Sir. Why? Because there's a DNA genetic thing that works from one to another to another. Yeah. Jesus said when he died, he said, I'm going to be the firstborn, the firstborn among many brethren. Yes. yes. And, 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 and here's a good thing. When he died three days earlier, he said, it is finished. It's ended. I've ended the old. I've ended the curse. Everything Adamic has died. Oh, nobody wants to help me now. Don't you tell anybody anymore that the old Adam is raising up in you. No. Oh, we have an Adamic nature. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5, he said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new, 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 a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. That translation in the original Greek is like this. Yes. It says a species never having before existed. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. See, if you want to get up and act a fool, it's because you're claiming your genetic DNA to Adam. Yeah. Oh, hello, Waltz. Yes, sir. But if we're going to follow on to know the Lord, yeah. You can't let old Adam raise up anymore. No, sir. You gotta realize I'm a new species. There is not one cell, not one bit of mitochondria in me related to Adam. That's right. That's right. Oh God help me. Glory to God. Why? Because I'm a new creature. Yes. Brand new. Brand new. Never been before. No history. Don't tell me about my history. I don't yeah. got one. That's it. Amen. I remember Brother Gary. <laughs> Oh, you should have known him back then. <laughs> he's a rascal. I hate to tell you this, but he's dead. Yes, yes. yes sir. There's a new man Hallelujah. in the yes. earth. Yes, sir. Wow. God. Elijah told Elisha, he said, if you see me when I go, yeah. it'll be so. Yes. Now the Bible says next, Suddenly out of heaven came chariots of fire and horses of fire. Yeah. And there's church people that says, well, that's what took Elijah, Elijah up. But that's not what it says. No. Uh -uh. The scripture says that the chariots of fire and the horses of fire came down, but a whirlwind took yeah. Elijah. Yeah. What was the purpose of the chariots of fire? It was a move of God. Yeah. It, was a, it came out of heaven. It was a move of God. But it was a distraction. Yeah. My God. There are people that get distracted with fire. And we get distracted with loud noises and the beauty and the lights. We get distracted. We get distracted with lesser orders. Yes, we do. Yep. That's right. Yes, we do. 
And I'll just throw this out. You do what you want to with it. This is free. Churches today, the mega churches, are all about entertainment. Yes, they sure are. are. They have beautiful lights, stage, performances, spotlights, yes, smoke, yes, mirrors. That's the truth. Great singers, great musicians, great everything. Yeah. Why? Because people are distracted. They are. That's right. They're distracted by the end. Is that a move of God? Sure, it's a move of God. Sure, it is. God touches lives in those orders. He does. He does. He does. But for those that have an ear to hear what God's saying, you're not going to be satisfied with that entertainment. No. Absolutely not. And if you'll notice, they're not distracted. I got to be honest with you. If I was if I was there that day at the River Jordan with Elijah and Elisha, I'd have missed the boat because I'd have been so distracted by that beauty. <laughs> yeah, amen. And I know y'all are holier than me, but that's that's what it'd been me, Tony. I said, "Woo, man, look at that! Isn't that cool?" <laughs> Where's my camera? <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's my video? <laughs> And and, and and the whole time, the whole time that that, that side show was going on, Elisha's eyes never left Elisha. Hallelujah. Elijah. That's awesome. When the whirlwind came uh-huh. and picked him up and carried him away, he cried, My father, my father, Ooh, the yes, chariots yes. of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Oh, hallelujah. That mantle came fluttering to the ground. Yes. That's awesome. God began to do something brand new with that man. So now here he is. He is now praying for his servant. He's not praying for deliverance. Can we hear this? Yes. Because I promise you there is nothing you're dealing with or have ever dealt with that has been allowed to touch your life to destroy you. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. There's a lot of sickness. There's not a torment. There's not a mental issue. There's not a financial issue. There is nothing touching your life or your children's lives that is there to destroy. No. It can't. No, so can't. It's there for our making. Yes. That's it. Right. That's good. Right. Hallelujah. That's why what's going on right now, you see, when he, when Elisha prayed for that, that servant father to open his eyes, he was already had his eyes open on a lesser realm. Yeah. But God had to open his eyes and he lifted his eyes, the Bible said, and the heavens were filled. Hallelujah. And he said, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. That's right. And then God turned the thing around oh and caused an entire nation to come to the Lord Hallelujah. because of that. Yes. Can we not see what God's doing? Yes. 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 All I can think about is, oh, I'm hurt. Oh, I don't feel good. Or, oh, yes. you don't like me. Or, I don't like you. And all oh, this. And we're moaning and groaning the blues about and stuff that don't even matter. That's and creation's right. out here groaning. Yes. Tony, I like that word that you brought, man, about standing. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the uh, Apostle Paul, he wrote that the whole creation is groaning, waiting for a manifestation. I love the Phillips translation of that yeah. verse. It says the whole creation is standing on tiptoe. Yeah. Yes. Come on, can you hear that? Can you see the excitement and the expectation there? If you're standing on tiptoes waiting for something, you're not reclining, hoping it happens during your lifetime or you could care less, but you're standing there in absolute anticipation of what God's about to do. And I want to tell you something, folks. There's a people that's standing tonight right here in this room that are standing on tiptoe and we're waiting on a manifestation we've never seen before. It's not going to happen with our old thought pattern. It's not going to happen the way we think. If we don't release, release, release each other unto a new place, then we're not going to ascend into a place in God. He said, I want you to change the way you're thinking. I want you to have my mind, my thoughts. I want you to see through my eyes the finished product. Yes, sir. See, we have trouble with that because when we look around, we, we see folks that that caused us problems and headaches and troubles and we get all aggravated and, and we want God to uh, rain fire down on them. <laughs> but God says, no, I'm here to reconcile all men. All men. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, sir. We're here to set creation free. God, help us to change our minds. Let there be such a release. Yes, sir. Jesus came and when He came, 
he was operating under an old covenant, but when he died, he brought out about a brand new covenant. He began to change the way people were thinking. Please understand something. Every man, woman, boy, and girl for hundreds of years was waiting on Messiah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. They were waiting on Messiah. They were waiting on Messiah. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. They had scriptures. And to this day, to this day, to this day, if you go over in Israel uh, on Passover, to this day, if you go over, uh, those that, that, that practice these things, the, the, the old Jewish customs, what they do is they will set their table according to Passover customs. And they have a special place at the head of the table yeah. that's always empty. They're waiting on Messiah. Yeah. They're waiting on Messiah. So everybody's been waiting on Messiah. Well, He shows up one day in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Suddenly He's healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. He's doing all kinds of really cool things. And everybody says, well, praise the Lord. He's finally come. He's probably, you know, even Peter. Peter got the revelation. Thou art the Christ. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 the demons were recognizing Him. Oh, this is surely this is the Son of the living God. He had to tell them, shut up, be quiet. Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah. I find it interesting, in, just in, in passing, I find it, in, in, it interesting that the people, the, the very first ones that declared He was the Son of God and recognized who He was was devils. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Right. I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah, he had to tell him to be quiet. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. And for all of our understanding, we got nothing. That's right. Absolutely. But he comes up there, and and everybody's waiting. Everybody's waiting. Everybody's waiting. And when he shows up, he don't show up like they think he ought to show up. Yeah. Yeah. He's born in a manger in a barn. Yeah. He, 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 he doesn't come from all the royalty and the bloodlines and He doesn't come with all the fanfare and all the other stuff that's going on. And it, and, and, and it looks like nobody knows what's going on. And, and we, we all know these things. Uh, the thing that I find interesting is on the day of resurrection, the Bible said there were two men walking on the road to Emmaus. And as they're walking on the road to Emmaus, the Bible said they're discussing the events of the prior three days yeah. of how they just knew they just knew that this Jesus had done all these miracles and was doing all these wonderful, wonderful things. All of a sudden, he, he got caught and killed. Yeah. They killed him. Yeah. And they're talking about it. The Bible said Jesus came and He joined themselves to them as they were talking. Yeah. And He began to talk with them. And He said, what's going on, fellas? And they said, oh, are you a stranger here? You don't know? You, you haven't been hearing what's going on? We thought for sure we had the Messiah. We, we, we watched Him do all these really cool things. And they killed Him three days ago. They, they crucified Him. He's dead. And, 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 and then they say something really that really revealed their hearts. And it reveals the hearts of the majority of the Christian world today. Come on. We thought, we thought he was a Messiah. Yeah. We thought surely he would deliver us from the Romans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean to me today? Oh. We thought surely, and like Lydia and I, when we, we, we pastored at a little Baptist church there for three years, didn't we? That was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that, that know me, know that they had to be absolutely out of their minds to ask me to come preach. <laughs> Lydia's sweet sister called us up. Tell us real quick. She called us and said, uh, "We want y'all to come preach for us." And, I, and she had heard me preach before. I said, "Huh?" I said, "Those people don't want me to come preach." <laughs> she said, "That's what I told them." <laughs> <laughs> Him, I said, everybody's waiting on Jesus to come. Everybody's waiting on Jesus to come. Everybody goes, Amen, Amen. I said, Why? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. Why do you want him to come? Well, you want him to come because, well, I want to pay my bills. <laughs> I want him to come and let me win the lottery. I want him to come and heal my body. I want him to come and make my kids act right or my husband or my wife or my dog or cat or whatever's out here. We, we want him to come change our problems. Don't change me because I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, right. But I want him to change all of y'all. Yeah, yeah. Come on. All right? And Jesus, he didn't come for that. No, he didn't. He said, my kingdom's not of this world. No, come on. If it were, I could have called legions of angels to deliver. Yes, sir. But that's not why I've come. 
And we want Him to show up in our services. And we want Him to show up and manifest His glory in our midst in these services. And we want to feel the doodads up and down our arms. And we want Him to touch us and prophesy to us. And we want Him to do this and this and this and this. And we don't realize. He said, I'm coming to change you. Yeah. I want to change you. Not your neighbor. I want to change you. Yeah. I want to put my nature, my character yeah. in you. Yeah. And you don't get the character and nature of God by the laying on the hands. No, you get it in hell. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, hallelujah! Wouldn't that be great? I like to have. I like to get on uh, uh, on TV one of these days and announce. Everybody wants the nature of God put in you, and your troubles be over. I will have a prayer line. Come on down. I'd have a hundred mile long line. That's right. <laughs> But it don't work that way. No, sir. It don't work that way. The nature of God is put in us and, and, and it goes to the tabernacle of Moses. The very first piece of furniture that he told Moses to create, to make, was the Ark of the Covenant. And the pattern is there. The pattern is there. And the word pattern, he told Moses, make it according to the pattern. The word pattern there literally is a Hebrew word that means it's stamped one time. Wow. It's not something that you piece together, no, and you have to you have to make it fit, and you pour it you pour it and melt it in there. That's not it. You stamp it. That's it. If you've ever seen any kind of a manufacturing process, and I know Darren has when he was with yeah. Reliance, and no doubt Larry has, and, I, and Tony on different yeah. ones. You, you work with these things too, so you know what I'm talking about. Yes, they have a mold and they have a pattern, and 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 and, and this piece of metal or whatever will slide over, and and and, and, and this thing will come down and smack oh, it, oh, and it conforms to whatever the mold oh, is. That's it. That's it. One time oh, shot. Oh, that thing don't sit there and go, come on now, fit, come on, fit, come on, fit. Man, boom, it's fit, and it's done. That's it. Well, God said, that's my pattern. That's One time it. shot, boom. That's good. I'm making you. One time shot. The pattern is Jesus. Yeah. I said, the pattern is Him. A one time son. Yeah. Put Him in place. There He is. He made it. Then he said, you're going to take acacia wood. That was an incorruptible wood. It speaks of humanity. That's because God became flesh. Yes. And it's a one-time shot. He became flesh. And then it says, he told Moses, he said, fill it in and out with gold. Yeah. That, that's what it reads in your Bible. Fill it in and out with gold. Yeah. I just covered a lifetime of process in a half a second. Yeah. Hallelujah. Before there's ever any outward sign of gold, there must be a filling of the inside of gold. That speaks of His divine nature. And if you study that out, it was beaten gold. That means process. For those of you that think it's finished and over with, it ain't even started good. He's beating that nature in us. Hallelujah. And you know, after, like I, I've shared this before, I've shared this before, stuff like this, you know, we think we're all holy because we tell each other we are. And I was thinking, knowing that process, the inside must be totally filled with gold before the outside's ever put on. That's right, you're right. We went to Cracker Barrel last night. I could not believe how carnal those people were. Not one person saw the glory on us. <laughs> Not one person. I thought, how carnal can these people be? Didn't they know we just left a really hot service? You know why? Because it ain't totally filled up with gold yet. That's right. And once this vessel is filled with gold, then the out, outside begins to take on the appearance. Yeah, that's right. Oh, hallelujah. But before I can ever radiate the outward my nature everything about me must radiate him yeah yes. absolutely oh hallelujah yes. when we open our mouth and speak they got to look at us and say i've never heard anything like that before amen. yeah amen yeah no more religion no more judgment yeah. no more mess yeah. Yeah. and that and that we were singing that song there was a woman sitting at the well remember that in the book of john Amen. And I like what happened there. The Bible said Jesus came and sat on the well. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Not at the well. On the, on the well. well. <laughs> we need God to sit on our well. Yeah. 
but we're going to try to figure out a way to sneak around and get back in that well if we can. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. He, he, she told Jesus and said, "This is Jacob's well. Our father dug this well, and, and this is this is our well. And, and we we've been we've been serving him and drinking out of this well for years." Jesus told him, "Said you don't even know what you worship, for salvation is of the Jews." Yeah. And you worship in this mountain, and we say we worship in that mountain, and nobody even knows what's going on anymore. Everybody's all divided. But Jesus came and sat on her well, and He told her, said, if you'll drink this water. Yeah. And I like what she said. She went back and told the people, she said, this man told me everything I ever did. I never heard nothing like it in my life. Yes. And, and please understand so. When He told her, He said, you go get your husband. And, and she said, well, I don't have a husband. He said, you've spoken well, for you've had five, and the one you're with now, even your husband. And here's the thing that blew her mind. There was no judgment there. Amen. Nobody was judging. Jesus didn't judge her. No. He turned her life around with no judgment whatsoever when He could have judged. Yes, He could. We've heard that story about the woman caught in the act of adultery and how He told him. He said, He that's without sin cast the first stone. He could have thrown a stone, but He didn't. That's right. Amen. He's changing our thinking, folks. He's changing our mentality. He's changing the way things are. Oh, Hallelujah. We need to understand that if we're going on with God, it's going to be because there's been some changes in our minds. That's right. Amen. I've heard it said this way, and I believe it to be true. What you are under pressure is what you really are. Yeah. Yeah. We can all come in here and shout and dance, prophesy, shandai, and sing, and do all the things we do. And that's well and good. But the real pressure, and I, I've shared this story before, uh, my dad, years and years ago, pastored an old Pentecostal church there in Dallas. And I'll never forget, we had a bunch of sweet little old Pentecostal ladies. Y'all have seen them at places like that. And they'd shine down, jerk around, sling bobby pins all over the floor and do all that kind of stuff. I don't know if they do that anymore. I don't know if they have bobby pins, but whatever. That's how, I tell people, that's how we used to tell if we had a good service or not. Count the bobby pins. And, uh, but there's one little lady in particular, boy, she's like the church mother, and I mean, boy, she could talk in tongues and prophesy and do all kinds of stuff. Everybody just thought, my God, she's so holy, she walks through walls and everything. <laughs> and one night after church, I'll never forget, had a really good Holy Ghost hoedown service, and things were just really great and wonderful, and, and we're dismissing and we're going outside, and the little, sweet little old lady slammed the car door on her thumb, and something come out that was not Shondi. <laughs> uh, yes, oh, hallelujah, what are you saying? Under pressure, the real thing's coming out of the house. That's right. Come on, that's good. That's right. Well, hallelujah, the real thing will come out. And, and see, when we've been under, when, when we can all uh, say yay and amen to the things of God in here when the Spirit's moving, but when you walk out the door and the pressure hits, that's when you need to have the mind of Christ. Amen. That's right. Absolutely. That's when you need to have the Melchizedek blessing on your life so that you bless and curse not. That's yes. it. Oh, hallelujah. Is this all right? Yeah. Is this making any sense to anybody? Absolutely. I'm here to tell you, folks, release is at hand. I'm going to close with this. Release is at hand. For God has brought us full circle. He said, now those that have an ear to hear, let him hear. That's found in the book of Revelation. He that hath an ear to hear. And the translation of that is this. He that hath a mature ear. The mature, yeah. that's it. What does that mean? It goes back to the old military thing when they would blow the, the trumpet, the sound. Remember? Yeah. They said that they would blow the trumpet and, and, and a certain sound meant charge, yeah, a certain sir. sound meant retreat, yeah. a certain sound said go to sleep, a certain sound said wake up. And when the children of Israel were getting ready to move the camp, they all were in their place and they would all pack up and they would stand in their place right. and the priest would blow the trumpet. Each tribe had its own sound. And you did not move out of order. You moved only when you heard your sound. Yeah. Well, if you're not mature, meaning if you cannot discern the sound, you don't know when to move. That's right. Let me just ask you this real quick. And I know some of you have done this. Have you ever been in a service before where the Spirit of the Lord is moving and God began to slowly move by the Spirit, change the order, and somebody jump up out of order? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Maybe they jump up and want to prophesy some nonsense. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Or they get up and want to say something that ain't that don't need to be said or don't need to be sang. It's because they don't discern the sound of the yes, Spirit. That's right. Absolutely right. They don't discern the sound of the Spirit. They, 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 is this all right? Yes. Yeah. I'll never forget Bob Toronto talks about this when they had the, the, the barn. And, and he said, man, people used to just beat each other up trying to chase each other to get to the pulpit. If you've ever been to an open pulpit meeting, it happens. Oh, yeah. you know? yeah. And he told them, one, one particular time, he says, all right, here's the deal. For the next 30 minutes, yeah. 
I don't want nobody to get out of your seat. Nobody. We're waiting on the Lord. I don't want nobody to move. I don't want you to get up. I don't want you to do anything. I want everybody sitting still. For 30 minutes, we're going to wait on God. And he turned to go sit down, and he said before he got to his seat, he heard footsteps. <laughs> they was headed to the pulpit. He, he had to make them sit down. And, and, and we're at a time like that, ladies and gentlemen, when the Lord is saying, you need to discern the sound. Yes. Yeah. Discern the sound. God can show us all kinds of things. He said, in all thy getting, get understanding. Because yeah. there's people, God can give you a word, but if you speak it out of season, That's it's right. not good. It brings right. death and not yeah. life. That's it. God wants us to hear the word of the Lord. Let there be life. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Is this okay? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. God's changing us. He's wanting to change our mentality, our way of thinking. And He's wanting us to realize we're here for more than just us four and no more. We're here to, to reconcile a hurting creation. Yes, we are. Yes. We're here to change the order of a creation out here. A religious order that has failed people everywhere. They failed yes. creation everywhere. God says, I've got some sons that I've had hid for a time and a season. Yes. I've been training them and showing them right. and getting them to understand I'm about to use them. And we've been trying to hurry up and get people to yes. see us. So oh, look how anointed I am. And God says, it's not time. Sit down. Yeah, right. I want to change things. Sit down. Yeah. Be quiet. Wait on me. Because yeah. your gift will make room for you. That's yeah. right. That's good. Absolutely right. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Folks, release is at hand. Is this all right? Yes. Has it made any sense to anybody? Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's give the Lord a hand. Tell him God bless you. Amen. Well, ministry is not over. Because uh, we're about to take on some uh, ministry to the flesh. <laughs> the chef is in the kitchen. I want to uh, invite each and every one of you to stay and get your bellies full. We've got our spirits filled and uh, uh, we got homemade chili beans and homemade vegetable soup and sandwiches and all kinds of stuff in there. So stick around for food and fellowship. Amen. That's as much a part as min of ministry is uh, standing and uh, preaching or singing or anything. It's uh, bonding with one another. Uh, I, as uh, Gary was preaching, there was a few things I began to reflect on some of the word that has been uh, coming uh, and flowing out of this house. And uh, you can't go just anywhere and get this quality of word minister. I went different places and there's more time spent on talking about, uh, you know, finances and programs and, you know, uh, setting this up and setting that up and all that uh, stuff is fine and well but for this house I want there to be a pure life giving and flowing word yes. you know uh, I begin to think about uh, a statement that the Lord dropped in my spirit that I made God is out to kill death in you uh -huh. yes. the enemy is out to kill life in you yeah. And the church world talks about the saving of the soul, but yet the Word says, He that loses his soul yes. shall gain it. So God has taken us through a place called the death. I appreciate Crystal. We was talking about um, being, uh, being the clay. And he is the potter. Yeah. And, and the last kill. process yeah. is the kill. Yeah. We're in the kill. Yeah. Yes, and if we ain't in the kill, we're getting ready to get yes. killed. <laughs> How you like that for the good news? I don't like you and Gary that good news. <laughs> so, and then, uh, and, and you know, it's funny, I sit and, and listen. I don't know if y'all listen to ours, but I, we listen to y'all's, and it's funny. Uh, some of the same messages, almost verbatim, uh, get preached out of the house of the Lord and out of uh, Gary and Lydia's ministry and, and Josh Quinnup and uh, David and Lisa and just different ones. But uh, I preached a message uh, about uh, to whom much is given, much is required. And then you said the same thing I was watching. The, it's demanded to whom much is given. 
much as demanded. So this was uh, brought back to my remembrance today as I was beginning to listen to uh, the word that was being ministered out of this pulpit. And um, with that being said, I really feel this in my spirit. If you heard the word of the Lord, there's uh, there's some things that we have to lay to rest in our yes, lives. We do. Come on, brother. It's time for us to lay some things to rest so yes, that we can. Yes. Remember what we talked about position. Yeah. We have to for us to really be in our position. We talked about in, in sports. Every player has a position, mm -hmm. and you you. It said a different way, but we were talking and, and, and talking about using Larry for an example. You know, we have a position that we must be in yes, uh, for the for this thing to be played right. That's right. For the hand to be played, and, and, and God is the he's he's the dealer. Yes, he is. And uh, he he sets the hand out there. And he's also the player. That's it. He's he's working us and he's getting us in our position. It's preparation. He's putting us in our position. But for us to take that place and that position, we have to. Uh, the, in the Lord's prayer, it says, "Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors." Yeah. Or some people say trespasses. Uh, I'd rather say, "Look at your neighbor and say, I forgive you." That's right. That's right. It's a hard thing to do. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. We have to, and that's what I'm talking about, for us to progress forward. I mean, for us to really take that word to whom much is given, much is required, much is demanded, knowing what we know, if we don't do these simple things, Amen. those simple things will hinder the growth yeah. uh, that God intends for you. So we have to forgive those who have trespassed against us. And we're waiting on them to forgive or, or for them to make the first move. But the Bible says too much is given, much is required. I want to say this. God took your place so that you can take His place. God took your place so that you can take His place. He bore every thing so that you can bear everything. Every good thing. He has promises and laid up for us. And I, I want to see uh, every person in this house. And uh, the last thing I want to say is, also Gary said the same thing that I've been telling Dana, and she can tell you this. I may have even said it from behind the pulpit. I believe her healing is coming as she opens her mouth in yes. obedience to the word Absolutely. of the Lord that is in her. Yeah. And uh, you were saying the same thing about Lydia. And, and that goes for all of us. Yeah. And not only does that, uh, t uh, you know, dealing with these things and, and being obedient yes. to the Word of the Lord that's in us, it'll bring about healing in these bodies. Yeah. Yes. Amen. And you'll say, well, I've seen Grandma Harper be obedient her whole life and she still battled in her body. I'm not sitting here telling you life's going to be all hunky-dory. No, no. But... Uh, you can lay your head down on your pillow at night and sleep a whole lot better uh, and, and get a good night's rest without harboring all these things so that we can hear God without any distractions, without any questions, without any doubts. I want us, while they're warming up the food, to take a moment and minister uh, to Gary and Lydia as they're going to be making a trip to uh, Winnipeg, Canada. And uh, not only that, just uh, the Lord began to show me, and I felt this all weekend, I, but, and I really was thinking it was uh, Dad, uh, began to show me a pen in hand. But I know tonight the pen, the, the, the hand that, that, that the pen was in was in yours, Lydia. God's going to begin to cause you to write 
the things that you've experienced and the things that you've gone through, God's going to begin to move on you to express uh, the transformation in the experiences that you've had in, in, in your walk. He's going to begin to cause you to put pen to paper and it'll be like a document. And you're going to document uh, the kind of uh, experience you've had with the Lord and it'll minister to many, many people. Yes, Hallelujah. And I believe who it'll affect the most is your family. Yeah. So God's going to inspire you to begin to write. Hallelujah. And I, I begin to, and the way that come about, I was thinking, uh, you know, I'd love for Dad to begin to write some things, and I begin to see the pen in the hand, but it was you, Lydia, that I saw yes. writing mm -hmm. ministry. Hallelujah. You know, I, I've said this before. Try it. I'm going to say this and I'll shut up and we're going to eat. <laughs> and, oh, we're going to pray for uh, them first. Uh, you know, if you fall out with somebody and they're mad at you or whatever, if you'll write them a letter, they can't resist but to read it. That's right. Because human, human nature is so stinking nosy. <laughs> so take advantage of their humanity and begin to write. And, and if you'll do it with a, a heart and a compassion uh, and, and do it in love, and God will begin to minister to different ones. Amen. That's the way... Joel Osteen. Uh, Joel Osteen's mother. She said that everybody that she'd ever had a word with, ever had anything, she said that God sat down and she, he said, I couldn't call him on the telephone. Couldn't see me. I had to write it down. <laughs> write every, every, and I'm just showing what yeah. you're saying is the truth. Amen. She wrote down everybody that she had ever. From the time she can remember, on from the time she's a child, on the, and wrote, sat down and wrote letters and thought he on her body, and she's still living. And Amen. she was supposed to have been dead back in the 70s. That's good. It's truth. That's and she wrote yeah. those people a letter, and, and by doing that, and they didn't give her just what, a few weeks to live. Yeah. And she was still, because she obeyed God and wrote those letters. Amen. Amen. Carol, thank you so much for coming and, and making the trip. Uh, you've blessed us being here. Uh, it really humbles me to know that in this little place in Mooresboro, North Carolina, people are uh, hungry enough and have enough confidence in what's happening here. And, and it's God. God's happening. And... Uh, I so appreciate it. It's, uh, it's humbling to have you make the trip three hours to come and be a part of uh, these meetings. And we love you, sister, for that. And uh, Bill and Pat, uh, if I don't know if they'll have an opportunity to catch any of this, but uh, let's continue to keep them lifted up. And it's so uh, humbling to have different ones make a, a long trip to come and, and be a part of meetings like this. Father God, let's stretch our hands toward uh, Gary and Lydia. Father God, we just ask a special blessing on them, God. Father, continue to do a work in the, all the words that you prophesied and had men and women prophesy over Lydia, God. We hold on to those promises and those words, God. Hallelujah. And we desire and we long to see her completely healed in her body, God. And her begin to walk out every word that's been spoken over her life. Hallelujah. Reconciliation in the family. Restoration in the family. Healing in her body. Clarity in her thoughts. Hallelujah. We rebuke anything that would try to come against them in their travels, God. We want them and we desire for them to be completely free of any kind of burden that they can be so in tune with you, God. Hallelujah. That there is not a single distraction, hallelujah, that would cause them uh, uh, to, to uh, have any kind of anxiety or restless nights that they... They can do the work of the ministry. Father God, we just thank you for Gary. We minister to him. God, begin to even stir in him now. For God, we know that uh, there is a fire in his soul burning. 
hallelujah, to set the captive free, God. And there is a people that their hearts have been prepared in Canada to receive of the word of the Lord that's going to flow out of Gary and Lydia Gatman when they go there, God. Even as they leave this place, God, begin to drop the word of the Lord in him that he is to deliver to Winnipeg, Canada. And let this house be a strength to every ministry that flows in and out of here. My mind goes to David and Lisa, to uh, uh, Gary and, and, and uh, Grace Parson, God, yes, and, and to Josh Winnip and his family, God, to, yeah. to uh, Bob Taranjo and, yeah. and uh, Bobby Jean. We just minister to all these yes, different ones. Lord. Dennis James, we send a life-giving yes, word to you, brother, yes, and your Lord. family, and Jamie and Sheila, God. We just minister to you guys. Yes, we are one, yes, one, one, yes, one, one body yes, under yes, one Lord. covering, yes, and that is the Lord God Almighty. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, he does all things well. Hallelujah. He couldn't make a mistake if he tried. And we thank you for that, Jesus. And we just want to pray over the meal right now, God. Let it be a, a a blessing and a nourishment to our bodies. Hallelujah. And, and we just thank you for every servant that's in the house who have took the time, hallelujah, to, to put their love in these dishes and, and, their, and, and, and to extend their time and, and, their, and their gas money to make the trip and be here and be a part. And we ask that and they leave um, with a clear vision, with a full spirit, Hallelujah, that their uh, soul is completely full of you, God, and running over with blessings and that are of you, God. Thank you, Jesus. All these things in your name we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 Let's eat.